Hey, I'm Bob Runkel. And for as long as I can remember, I've loved pop culture. Despite the challenges I've faced in my life, pop culture has always been there for me. I love talking to people and being a platform for others to share their thoughts and stories. Because if there's one thing I never get tired of, it's seeing driven, talented, and inspiring individuals follow their dreams, no matter what obstacles are in their way. And I know a thing or two about that. Welcome to the DJ Bob Show. I'm DJ Bob. Roll it. The DJ Bob Show. Pop culture, past and present. Now, here's your host, DJ Bob. Okay, a couple things at the top before we start this interview. I'm DJ Bob. Welcome to the show. How are you? In this episode, we are joined by Nikki Lopez, co-creator and executive producer of the new Nick Jr. Nickelodeon show for preschoolers, Santiago of the Seas. We talk with her about creating the show, casting the kids, cultural representation, and so much more in this short time. I hope you enjoy it. Now, note, this episode was recorded on the wrong microphone. I'm aware it sounds different. There were some technical issues right before we started, but please don't let that distract you from the amazing anecdotes shared in this interview. I hope you guys enjoy it, and make sure you catch Santiago of the Sea premiering on Nickelodeon today at 12.30 p.m., Eastern and Pacific time on Nickelodeon. Enjoy the episode. How are you? Good. I feel I, I feel like we know each other. We're like Instagram buddies. <laughs> yes, we're Instagram buddies. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm so excited about this show. And I, I'm so excited to talk to you about it. Oh, thank you so much. I, I'm excited to talk to you more about it. So, this is, this is not your first project with Nickelodeon. Do you want to talk about your relationship with the company and how you finally got to this show? Of course. Um, so, I started off at Nickelodeon um, about 10 years ago as an intern. Um, and my first production uh, that I worked on was Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness. So right after my internship ended, I was super lucky to to get hired as a production assistant. And that, I felt, was the most incredible school of, of animation that I could get because I was surrounded by so many talented people. And not only that, they were all so nice and accessible, um, and they gave me really good um uh, advice on like next steps for my career path so eventually after two years um i i went on to work as a a color designer or a painter on uh fairly odd parents and after fairly odd parents it was harvey beaks which was such a great show um and then uh i went on to glitch tech uh and then i got santiago so <laughs> it's been a marathon but a but a fun one nonetheless so was it difficult kind of transitioning to pre- preschool and curriculum and all that stuff? Because those shows really didn't have that. Right. Yeah, it, it actually, it, it, it was a little bit intimidating at first because prior to Santiago, all of the other shows that I've worked on were for an older audience. Um, and I, I suppose that the, the plus with Santiago is that even though there is a curriculum implemented, it is very much high energy and it's exciting and it's a little bit more adventurous. So certain risks that were appropriate for, you know, the preschool demographic were, were taken. Um, but uh, luckily, the studio does a great job of uh, pairing up creators with consultants and university professors and executives to make sure that that, you know, we're checking all the boxes to, to make sure that the show delivers in uh, its message and its curriculum. Because, you know, curriculum in a kid's show is a very important thing. 
Like, you don't want to make it seem like it's almost another character in the show to where it's, you can kind of tell when it's coming. It's kind of so that the child doesn't know that they're learning. And I think that that's a good part of Santiago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like we, we did it in a way, I'm hopeful at least that it, it appears that way, that and we did it in a way that felt very, very natural and, and organic um, what, through, through how Spanish is used, um, highlighting bilingualism, where, where it's all the characters that switch between English and Spanish. And then where they live, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastical world that's very much based on, on Latin Caribbean culture. So, you know, hoping that when little kids see that you know they're 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 learning from that culture and not only that but Santiago is is a good pirate and he goes out and and tries to help out um so we're also trying to teach kids pro-civic behavior which and and kindness which I feel is so important nowadays (laughs) more than ever I think that's very true yeah so can you give us a brief kind of premise of what Santiago's about for our audience? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, Santiago, uh, he's, he's a main character and he's this eight year old island dwelling boy, um, who has, uh, kind of like a heart of gold and he, he loves adventure. He also has this little, uh, pet cookie frog whose name is Pico and he likes to live on top of his bundle of hair. Um, and uh, Santiago and Pico hang out with Tomas, who's Santiago's uh, cousin. He plays a guitar, and he's he's really silly. He he sometimes is a little bit more nervous when they go on adventures, but you know he tags along nonetheless. Um, and then there's Lorelai, who she's so cool. She is this mermaid that has a magical pearl bracelet and she can transform from mermaid to pirate girl. So generally they're, they're out and about the Island, whether, whether they're relaxing and having fun. And then all of a sudden, you know, Santiago has this magical compass that, that he found from, from his hero, Captain Calavera. And it, it usually lights up and tells him like, Oh, there's trouble in this part of the island or in some distant land and they transform into pirate protectors and Santiago can summon from the seas the legendary pirate ship El Bravo and sail towards where trouble is so they can so they can save the day. <laughs> and what I've always what I've noticed about the show is that kids are playing kids and that happened that's happening more often than not. So what was it like finding your cast of kids? I, I mean, I feel we were we were pretty pretty lucky. For for me I, I wanted to to make sure that in terms of of, of it, the voice quality and the accents it, it felt as authentic as possible. So um the my my two partners um Valerie Walsh Valdez and Leslie Valdez, they're over in New York. So I flew to New York during casting and we had auditions and wow, there were so many fantastic candidates that came through. But, you know, when, when Kevin Chacong stepped up to audition for Santiago, he, he really embodied Santiago, not only, not only look wise, but, but he was just such a genuine and kind kid that, you know, to us, to us three, it was like, yeah, he's 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 our he's our hero. <laughs> and then there were there were other people like Alyssa, who plays Lorelai. She, she and of course being a mermaid, you know, she she has to have the ability to sing. And my goodness, Alyssa is not only a wonderful actor, she's so sweet, but she can sing like no other. She she's got a bright future ahead of her. And Justin Justice, who plays Tomas, is is so so cute. Uh, uh, very witty too. So he, he also was like an easy choice for Tomas. And then we got all our baddies, and they've all been terrific. Like um, Kendra, who plays Von Zone, and Hunter, who plays Enrique Real de Palacio. I mean, you got John Leguizamo, so. And there's John Leguizamo. 
<laughs> I was trying to focus on the kids, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that was amazing when we when we heard that John Leguizamo was interested in working with us. It was like, oh my god, I'm not worthy. <laughs> but how cool! I mean, it's it's a humbling experience. <laughs> how do you feel like cultural representation is important on children's television? I mean. I think I had such a fantastic example. I can I can I can speak to it from two angles. From the angle that myself, uh, having been born and raised in Puerto Rico, and when I watch TV like cartoons when I was little, like I did, I never identified myself uh, as a particular character. Whenever I would see characters on television, you know, they looked more fair skin and they were blonde, and I was like, well. I guess I can't be the hero because I don't look like that. Um, and then once we did research with Santiago and we showed episodes to, to little kids, um, our consultants spoke separately with it, each kid. And, and a lot of them would say, I like Santiago because his skin is like mine and his hair is like mine and he talks like me. Um, and that's huge. I mean, what a, what a wonderful boost of confidence and how empowering is it for little kids to see themselves on, on television to prove to them, like, yes, you you are the hero, too. And I, I, I love that. So earlier on, you talked about the magical compass. What would be your equivalent to that? What is something that you always have to have nearby that helped you? Oh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Um, so I, I have, um, I have two things that I always have nearby for, for, I feel like for good luck, um, or at least to make me feel like more in control. Uh, my, my grandpa who passed away a couple of years ago, he loved to collect like, uh, little, little statues of, of owls. And I always, I have one actually right next to me. So I have a little owl that used to belong to him. And that's kind of, I have it there, like to always watch after me. And then I have um, uh, this ring that that I bought in in New Orleans in New Orleans, and I, I always feel like it brings me a lot of positive energy. So <laughs> those are like my two magical compass equivalent items that I have close by. Like everybody has that one item that would be that for them. Like I just I have pictures from my childhood that I always hold close and nearby. So. Everybody has that thing. Yeah, yeah. So what do you hope people, what do you hope the preschool audience and kids at heart get from this show? I hope that when kids see this show, not only do they do they feel represented by how diverse the cast is, but I also um, hope that... Um, that they see that kindness is is a strength and not a weakness. That they they look after each other and and take care of their communities. That they desire to to do good because good is is always needed in the world. Totally. And just before we wrap up, when can people check out the show? When when this episode when this conversation airs, it will be on in like a few hours. So today, yep. So uh, it will it will air October 9th, and I believe the time will be at twelve thirty. But make sure to to check on 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 your TV guy <laughs> or whatever programming schedule you have available, so so you can tune in and and join the adventure. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. It was so nice talking to you. I'm I'm so glad this happened. Me too. The DJ Bob Show. Pop culture, past and present. 